Hey, what's up, awesome people, and welcome back to another lesson. G2, so glad to be with you again today. Hey, we got a great one for you today. Today, we're going to speak about uh, winning, five qualities that make up a winner, or just general qualities that make up a winner. Somebody who wins is somebody that um, has a lot of people around them. They're somebody that often has a lot of influence and... Uh, uh, winning often comes with a lot of fulfillment. Now, I don't know about you, but in my life, I want to win. I want to win. I want to win in my relationships. I want to win uh, in whatever career I decide to pursue. I want to win in my relationship with God. Uh, today, we're going to speak about um, the winning in a professional sense or winning at a certain thing. So we're not going to speak about winning in activities. I mean, sorry, we're not going to speak about winning in relationships. We're going to speak about winning at specific things all right we're speaking about achievement tangible measurable achievement and i'm going to give you five character qualities that can help you win in the way that you want to i can still grow in all of these and i have failed at all of these in the past and we're going to speak a little bit about that because uh, uh as much as i'm giving this to you and 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 maybe you're already doing this and you're already doing well in this uh there's going to come a time sooner or later where you're going to fall in one of these you're going to fail in one of them and i don't want you to feel super discouraged like there's no hope for you like you're benched for life like you can never be useful again i'm going to speak a little bit about that but before we get into these five uh, uh cool points would you turn in your bibles to first corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 and this is a scripture I'm going to be reading out of the New King James Version that speaks a little bit to the spirit of winning and to uh, uh, some of the character qualities that um, enable a person to win. So we're going to read in verse 24. It says, uh, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? And it says, Run in such a way that you may obtain it. So this is a really good scripture. So we're speaking about athletes, all right? We're speaking about running. We're speaking about competition. It says, don't you know that everybody runs and everybody runs the race, but there is only one who obtains the prize. There is only one who wins. There is only one who achieves first place. And it says, run in such a way that you may obtain it. What is it? Well, it is winning. It is the prize. It is first place, okay? And it is actually speaking to running and and winning in the best way that you can so this is important because winning is a big part of life and winning is a great motivator um we get motivated because we want to win and winning continues to motivate us because of the feeling that we get because of the adoration that we get because of the fulfillment that we get so it is um essential that we learn how to win in life you and i were born and created to fulfill a, uh, a unique role um through and in whatever we do our activities our work our relationship our schoolwork whatever it may be our marriage our dating uh with our kids with our nieces and nephews and, and family members so here are five personal character qualities that you can develop in order to win like you want to win here we go number one and this is a big one for me uh likability likability is a big one okay this is the first one likability so basically this concept of likability um is speaking about are you a nice person to be around are you the type of person who attracts people or who repels people are you somebody who people can work well with? Are you likable? Do people like being around you? Do you have a draw factor that you lean on? Or are you somebody who dampens every activity and brings negative vibes into a room and brings an atmosphere down when you enter in? Okay. Um, here's how you know one of the ways that you can actually figure out if you're a likable person is the response you get when you walk into a room. Okay, so if you walk into a room and people are like, oh my goodness, and they're coming up and they're, and they're, and they're trying to talk to you and they're like they're wanting your time and they're wanting your input and they're wanting your feedback and they're wanting your attention, you know you're a likable person because you have something that you carry that people want. People enjoy your personality. They enjoy being around you. You're a friend to people. You're friendly. And that's a great space to be in. On the opposite of that, though, if you walk into a room and nobody really wants to engage with you, and I'm not speaking about you're new there and it's your first time in this room and nobody knows who you are. No, no, no. You you know these people. Nobody wants to speak to you. Nobody greets you. You know, maybe you're not a very likable person. So working on your likability um, 
this character trait is going to enable you to continue to win. So smiling more, being friendly, asking people questions about themselves, taking interest in others likability, complimenting people, encouraging people, all that kind of stuff. Number two is teachability. People also refer this to, uh, uh, to this point as being coachable. So are you somebody who can receive instruction? Are you somebody who can uh, be criticized? Are you big enough to be criticized? Uh, are you somebody who listens? Are you somebody um, who is humble? Uh, and teachability is an exceptional skill to have. I'll tell you something, teachability um, if, if you're a teachable person, teachability can outweigh talent. I've seen this in my own life. When I, when I was swimming, I wasn't the most talented person in the water, but I was teachable. My coach knew that every time he gave me an instruction, I would do it. Anytime he corrected my stroke, I would implement it. I wouldn't get offended by it. I wouldn't get uh, defensive with it, but I would take it on board and try and improve. So teachability is huge. Teachability handles the ability to receive and implement instruction and also take on correction well. Next is reliability. Are you a reliable person? When you say you're going to do something, do you actually do it or do you flake out? Do you make commitments and cancel at the last second? Do you flake out on stuff a lot of the time? Are you somebody who people can count on? Are you somebody who people can trust? Are you somebody who people can uh, uh, trust with things, with their time, with their money, uh, uh, with their relationships, with opportunity? Or are you somebody who, who, who kind of drops the ball a lot? Somebody who's late. Bro, it's one of my biggest pet peeves. Don't be late, man. Be on time. My mom always said, uh, if you're on time, you're late. If you're if you're early, you're on time. So it's just a great rule to live by. You want to be somebody who is reliable, who can be counted on, right? So uh, it's doing what you say. Number four is adaptability. Fun fact about adaptability. This is the number one quality that hiring managers were looking for in 2020, according to LinkedIn. And that is still true today in 2021. So if you're in high school or you're in college, or you're thinking about career opportunities, adapt adaptability, sorry, is a huge personal character quality that you can develop and will help you to win continuously. Basically, adaptability is the ability to adapt to change. Or do, you, do you handle change well? Do you handle transition well? Can you handle a leadership transition, role transition? Uh, can you handle going through another development phase. Maybe you get different responsibility put on you. Uh, one of the great ways that you can upskill in your adaptability is actually if you're in school, you can do it with your subjects. You can start applying um, the effort required in each subject to kind of get them all a little bit level. Uh, I had to do this when I was swimming. I didn't want to just focus on one stroke. I wanted to do all of them so I could swim the IM. So I had to adapt to what each one of those would require. This is gonna be the same place, uh, same situation when you're in the marketplace, when you're in college, when you're trying to uh, job hunt or, or go after your career, build a business, do whatever you wanna do, build a family. Adaptability is huge because it enables you to seamlessly integrate between different seasons, different circumstances, different responsibilities, ups and downs in every time of your life. So adaptability is great. People love it. People are looking for it and people pay for it. Uh, number five, are you a person of integrity? So integrity um, is basically you have the correct morals and values. So you're not going to cheat. You're not going to cheat on your test. You're not going to cheat on your girlfriend or boyfriend. You're not going to um, steal. Okay. So this is basically who you are as a person. This deals with your character. This, this deals with what you value. This deals with your morale. This also deals with your motivation. What motivates you to do the things that you do. So what happens if you are somebody like me who has blown it in every single one of these areas at one time? or another because I have. I'll be the first to put my hand up and say I'm not perfect in this way. I've blown it in my likability. I've blown it uh, uh, by not being teachable enough. I've blown it by not being reliable. Um, I've had people lose trust in me. I've blown it in not being able to adapt to change as I need to. And I've blown it in the area of my integrity. All right, I'm going to be upfront and honest about that. Um, and I want to speak about what happens when you blow it in these areas. What do you actually need to do to recover? I want to say that you are no longer, uh, um, uh, don't think that you're useless. 
you, you still have purpose. Um, you still have meaning. You still have value. You still have something that you can give. Okay, you made a bad decision. Um, as I did, I've made bad decisions. Uh, but I'm not benched for life and nor are you. I've made bad decisions in my past and the Lord has helped redeem that and I am where I am today winning in the way that I want to win. So, so it's great and you can absolutely recover from it. So how do you do this? Number one is you got to own it. Take responsibility for it. Take responsibility. This is, this is a huge thing. Don't blame. Don't um, look at other people. Don't say, oh, I was just a mistake that happened. No, no, no. Own it. Say, you know what? I made a bad decision. I made a really bad decision. My integrity, my morals, values, they weren't in line. I wasn't teachable. I was stubborn. Uh, I wasn't reliable. You know, I wasn't I wasn't able to be trusted with that thing. And I, and I should have maybe said something. I, I haven't been the most likable person. And I haven't had the best draw factor to me. And I haven't been able to cope with this kind of change right now. Okay. And that is okay. That's okay to own. And that's okay to work through, but you got to own it. You got to take responsibility for it. So you can begin to change it. Once you've owned it, taken responsibility for it, apologize uh, to the people that your decision has affected. So, you know, if you, um, if you weren't reliable, if you blew it in that way and uh, you were meant to meet someone somewhere and you just didn't show up because, you know, you didn't value their time the way it needed to be valued. Own that, call them up, say, hey, you know what? This is the truth of it. I am so, so sorry. It is bad. It is really bad of me. Will you please forgive me? Once you have apologized, move on move on. You got to keep going. You got to keep walking. You got to keep making sure that you're headed in the right direction. Okay. And, um, that is how you get up from that place of blowing it big in one of these areas. And it's not circumstantial. Like this just happened to me. You got to understand that you made this decision. You made that decision to do that. Um, admit it, own up to it, apologize for it, and move on from it. Get better next time. There's going to be another opportunity. And I just want to encourage you in that, especially if you're in like high school, college, something like that, and you're dealing with firsts, uh, first time, you know, opportunities, big relationships, whatever it may be, there is a little bit of grace in that space for you. Uh, so I, I want to close off by just going to... Um, Galatians, scripture in, in, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And this is basically the byproduct of functioning in these qualities, growing them and developing them for a long time, doing it consistently, doing it well, being diligent with it and stewarding your opportunities uh, while applying these uh, uh, qualities in your life. And in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, the Bible says, um, and let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. This is basically saying that the direction that God has set you um, in, the path that he set you on, the process that you're in, continue to do what he's asked you to do well and consistently and with diligence, continue to be likable, teachable, reliable, adaptable, and um, a person of integrity. You may not see the immediate results right now, especially if you're in high school or college, but you will begin to see the payoff when you enter into the marketplace, when you enter into ministry, when you enter into marriage, when you enter into a position where you're able to develop your career, when you start that business, when you mentor those people, when you begin to hire, when you begin to build, when you begin to uh, create some of, uh, momentum and value, it will begin to pay off. The best way to ensure that you always have a harvest is by always Always sowing seed. So the Bible is basically saying, don't give up, don't lose heart, don't get discouraged. Even if you've blown it, uh, uh, own it, recognize it, apologize for it and move on and you will experience the fruit of it, the reward of it, and your ROI will be awesome. So I love that. And um, I, I'm so glad that we've had the opportunity uh, to get together today and speak about these qualities that make up a winner. I actually had 10. I had to like narrow it down to five just for the sake of time. But um, I hope that this has benefited you. I know that I've reminded myself of some stuff and I'm looking forward to the next one. I hope that you all have an incredible week and remember God is for you and he's with you. Can't wait till next week. Love you, G2.